Good morning, everyone. Today, our topic of discussion is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is also called as trisomy 21 and is a genetic condition that causes delay in physical and intellectual development. There is extra genetic material from the chromosome 21, so the individuals with Down syndrome have 47 chromosomes instead of the usual 46. So what are the risk factors? Women who are 35 years elder are at greater risk for giving birth to an infant with Down syndrome. It is usually seen about the age of 40 years and is common as one among 110 live births. Despite many years of research, advanced maternal age has been the only one factor that it has established in causing Down syndrome. So what are the clinical manifestations? In a child, we see microcephaly, flat face with upward slant to the eye, short and wide neck, small low set ears, flat nasal bridge, and a protruding tongue. Brush field spots, that is tiny white spots in the iris of the eye, short broad hands and feet, the single crease of the palm of their hands, small pinky fingers that sometimes curve towards the thumb, excessive space between the large and the second toe, and as well as muscle hypotonia is usually seen. So, when we come to the general manifestations, we see that the skull is brachycephalic, which is about 63 to 98%, with a flattened face and occiput. When you see flattened nasal bridges, about 57 to 87%, and when it comes to the eyes, there is oblique palpable fissures with prominent epicanthal folds, say around 70 to 98%. Brush field spots, scanty eyelashes, cataracts, squint, and nystagmus are characteristic features of such patients. The ears are dysplastic with an abnormal pinna, that is about 28 to 91 percent. Such patients usually have short and broad neck with excess skin seen posteriorly. Muscles and joints show hypotonicity or hyperextensibility, which is about 47 to 92 percent. Hands are broad and short. Short curved little finger and multiple loops of fingertips are seen. The systemic diseases that are usually associated are cardiovascular issues like ventri ventricular septal defects, AV communis, patent ductus arteriosus, mitral valve prolapse, and many others. The oral manifestation of this includes defects in the palate, that is, you see a stair palate with a V shaped high palatal wound or a soft palate insufficiency. The oral opening, that is, the angle of the mouth pulled down, results in hypotonic musculature. The lower lip is seen averted, which results in a hypotonic musculature again. Mouth breathing is usually seen, accompanied by drooling and antilatilitis. The tongue is scalloped, fissured, and is protruded, usually causing a tongue thrusting habit. And also, it can be a result of microglossia. And also, you see there is desiccated tongue due to mouth breathing habit. Periodontally, there is increased risk of periodontal diseases. Malalignment, frequent malocclusions, frequent TMJ dysfunction, and bruxism are common occlusion characteristics. The dental status shows microdontia, hypodontia, torodontism, crown variants, agenesis, hypoplasia, and hypocalcification. So, what are the complications of a patient with Down syndrome? 95% of the individuals with Down syndrome have mild to moderate mental retardation, delayed language, social, and motor development skills. The growth will be retarded. Congenital heart diseases could be present in about 50% of the cases, like atrial or ventricular defect, respiratory infections like pneumonia, and also vision problems like cataract at an early age. The other complications include hearing loss, which is about 60% and more, GI blockages or problems like esophageal atresia, duodenal atresia, or celiac diseases. Thyroid dysfunctions are commonly seen among such patients, along with sleep apnea, which attributes to about 50 to 75 percent. There is increased risk for dementia and high risk for acute lymphocytic leukemia in such patients. So, what are the diagnostic tests that we do? Pregnant women will often be screened with the option for invasive diagnostic tests for detection of Down syndrome, regardless of age. Again, amniocentesis is much an efficient way of diagnosing whether the developing offspring has any kind of defects before the birth. So what is the treatment or how do you go well with managing a Down syndrome patient? Down syndrome is not a condition that can be cured, but 
adequate treatment is required, which has to be planned well. Treatment is directed at addressing the individual concerns of a particular individual. For example, if there is certain heart defects, it may require surgery. Again, timely surgeries for cardiac and GI anomalies are necessary to prevent serious complications. Because the risk of vision problems, hearing loss and infection can be increased and screening should be done and treatment should be attributed. Determining the level of communication is very important in developing a cooperative relationship with the Down syndrome patient. The patient's family or caregiver will be able to guide the dental staff as to what level of communication is appropriate with the child. It is often important that the dentist communicates directly with the patient whenever possible in order to build a level of trust. And it may be advantageous to have a parent in the operatory during early childhood visits. So as a dentist, you have to find out what motivates the child best with Down syndrome and something as simple as receiving a pair of gloves and a mask at the end of the appointment may be that it all takes to ensure cooperation from such patients. With more difficult patients requiring more extensive treatment, pre-medication or restraints can also be used but under the consent of the parents. However, much patients and most of the patients with Down syndrome can handle routine dental care with just a little more time and attention given to them during the appointments. As much as possible, it is important to give early morning appointments to such patients. The patient's medical history should be obtained prior to the first appointment. Adequate oral care in the uh, form of distractions should be given. Try to reduce unnecessary sights, sounds or other stimuli that might make it difficult for the child to cooperate with you. Many people with Down syndrome, however, enjoy music and may be comforted by hearing it in the dental office, so it is more or less relaxing for them and they become cooperative for the treatment. Always work at a slower pace, do not hurry up like you do for a normal patient. Light sedation and immobilization may be indicated if needed. Severely resistant patients may also require GA. Again, self-care deficit like bathing and hygiene, dressing, feeding, toileting are all important in when you come to managing such patients. Consistent care should be given to them if there is disability. You should encourage the independence of such patients so that they ensure that the child is well cooperative. Give the child positive reinforcement for developing appropriate skills and behaviors to promote similar, severe behavior in the future. Impaired verbal communication versus impaired receptive or expressive skills. Talk slowly, use pictures, articles when you want to communicate with the child and always use a positive approach and uh, do not scream or scream like don't touch, or stop that because a child will feel scared and the child will become less cooperative to you. There are risk of infections. So, teach the family good hand washing to prevent the spread of bacteria and communicable diseases. Rinse the child's mouth with water after feeding and at other times of the day when they are dry. Mucous membranes are dry due to constant mouth breathing, which also increases the risk of infections as well as respiratory problems. Teach the parents to perform postural drainage and percussion if needed to keep the lungs clear. Identify the child and the parent to support the groups. Early intervention is the key. You need to give physical therapy, teach grows and fine motor movement skills, speech therapy if the child is devoid of language skills, occupational therapy where they develop and master skills for independence and as well as special education program. So thus, you need to give proper care and proper guidance to a patient with Down syndrome so that it, the treatment becomes more efficient and easy for you to manage. Thank you.